Hello everyone, I'm Laura Howard, Community Schools Coordinator for Batesville School District, and I want to welcome you to our next Pioneer Parent Academy session called College Planning 101. Today you'll be hearing from guests Michelle Gerhardt, who is the Academic Dean at our high school, Ms. Courtney Wallace, a counselor, and Ms. Lee Keller, the other counselor at our high school. Today, they'll be sharing um, information related to grade point averages, class rank, college applications and college scholarships, and very importantly, applying for financial aid, and particularly the FAFSA and the Arkansas Universal Application. Our first guest is Ms. Michelle Gerhardt. I'll hand it off to you, Michelle. It's always important to everybody to know about their grade point average and where they actually rank within their class seems like that becomes a very hot topic for kids once they start to earn credits. At Batesville High School, um, our students actually have four different types of GPAs um, that are used. We have a non-weighted, weighted, an in-house, and yearly, and hopefully I can explain what the difference is between each one of those. Um, our students, their GPA starts being calculated when they start earning credits. And for most of our students, that's in the ninth grade. Although we do have a few students who start earning credit as eighth graders, and I think the main class there is Algebra 1. Um, but as they earn grades within each one of those and earn credits or units, they start to build their GPA. And with their GPA, they start to build their class rank. So GPA is calculated from the time they start earning credits all the way through their second semester of their senior year. Some high schools um, finish computing that GPA at Christmas of their senior year, but Batesville High School goes all the way to the end of their senior year. So we have eight semesters that we use to be able to calculate that GPA. If you want to be able to calculate your GPA and kind of know what your GPA is, I've given you um, some information here on how to be able to calculate that. So for a non-weighted GPA, A's are worth four points, B's are worth three, C's two, so on. Um, if it's a weighted GPA, if it's through an AP class and your A is worth five points, and then it shows the breakdown there of the points that are assigned per the letter grade. So you want to add up those points for every A, you would give yourself four points for every B, three. Then you want to divide by the total number of classes. That will give you a rough estimate of what your GPA is. So you as a student, as a parent would be able to figure your child's GPA or a student can kind of know what their GPA is based on the grades that they make in their classes. So I've given you a sample transcript here. This is one that has some pre-AP classes and one AP class. So the pre-AP do not have weighted credit, so the A's are still worth just four points. So you would look at this transcript. The students made all A's. Um, so you see their grades there. So each one of those would be worth four points each until you get down to the AP biology. And because that's an AP class, those A's are worth five points. So that kind of gives you um, an idea and you see how um, it has the attempted credits and the earned credits for each one of those classes. So that's what a sample transcript would look like for you to be able to compute the GPA. Exceptions uh, to being able to figure GPA at Batesville High School are students who take classes at UACCB because they earn one credit or one unit each semester for every three college hours, that grade is actually calculated into their GPA two times. So if they make an A in a Comp 1 class at UACCB, because they earn the one credit for the fall semester, that A would be calculated into their GPA two times. So that's kind of an unusual exception. So college classes can really benefit your GPA if you make good grades. But if you make poor grades in college classes, they can harm your GPA. So our students need to be cautious about taking UACCB classes and know how that that calculates into their GPA. Also at Batesville High School, we have an in-house ranking. So we use that for our in-house GPA. This adds quality points 
for every AP class that a student takes. So the quality points that are added for an A, it's 0 0.04 for a B, 0 0.03. So the in-house GPA is always going to be a higher GPA than the weighted or the non-weighted because those quality points are added on. So it doesn't put a penalty against our kids for taking AP classes um, and also being involved in a lot of other activities. Um, it's actually a benefit for our kids who do take those more advanced classes. So I've given you a screenshot of a class rank for a particular student. You'll see each year um, how it's figured for first semester, second semester. The first one that we have there is the regular non-weighted GPA. So you see this student as an 11th grader has all A's. They have a perfect 4.0 and it shows that they're ranked number one out of 217. Now, rank does not come into play until the second semester of their senior year. That's the only time we actually look at rank. Um, all of our students will have a rank, but you may have 15, 20 kids who all are all ranked at the same spot. So you may have 20 kids that have the rank of one out of 217, but it starts to distinguish itself once we get to that last semester and the final GPAs are figured. The middle entry there is the in-house GPA. So you see a 4.14. That has the actual extra quality points that are added on for that student who's made A's and also taken AP courses. So their rank has changed. They're now three out of 217. The bottom entry is for the weighted GPA. You have a 4.04. So that shows that they have made an A for an AP class and it's added that extra weight on there because A's are worth five points um, in an AP class. So that rank is actually the same. It's one out of 217, just like the non-weighted. So you may see a difference in rank between the non-weighted, the in-house, or the weighted GPAs based upon the number of classes that a student has taken. Or you may see on your students' transcript that their rank and their GPA is all the same. And that's because that student has not taken any AP courses, doesn't have the weighted grade in there, or doesn't have the extra quality points added on. Thank you, Ms. Gerhardt. We'll move on to our next presenter, Ms. Courtney Wallace. Thank you, Ms. Courtney. We are excited to hear about college applications and scholarships. You're very welcome, Laura. Excited to be here. College applications have started for our seniors. Um, they have opened up in the fall. Some of those opened up in September. Some of those are open now. And so it's good to just go ahead and check to see if they're open and to start applying for those. We have actually started in our senior block class a couple weeks ago. We did a career assessment in during that period for our seniors to just kind of gauge what their interests are and to see um, what career opportunities they might be interested in based off of that. And so from that, then they can kind of get a guesstimate of how much educational experience they would need. And so from there, we're hoping to use those results to see what colleges they might would be interested in and to start helping them apply for those. Part of that college application process is requesting a transcript. And so we get students that send these to their counselors all the time. And typically, whenever that happens, then we will just kind of refer it back to Miss Deb, our secretary. And so Miss Deb is in charge of sending those transcripts out. And so what students can do is they can go to Miss Deb's office or to the office up front where she's located, and they will just ask her to fill in a book where they can sign to have their shot records and their transcripts sent over to her. Scholarships are starting right now too. Last year what we did for scholarships was I created a scholarship page where anytime I received an email or a scholarship in the mail then I upload that immediately to our scholarship page where students can see those updates. Those scholarships are in chronological order and so there are a few that are coming up in October. There's a few due in late October, some due in late December, and so um, I'm still getting those. And so as I receive those, I add them to our page. I try to send those out to students through Remind too. 
but there's so many that come in that I can't send all of them out through Remind. Um, and so I have already sent that page out to our students through Remind and through email and just encourage them to keep checking that to see what scholarships are available for them. What I have noticed too, is that several colleges, just if you log into the college page and look for scholarships directly through that particular college, then they have several available that we may not notice or we may not have available. Now, if those are available, then typically I try to upload those to our page as well so that they see those. Now we do have private and local scholarships that do not become available until the spring semester. And so those are really big and those are more of an interview application process. And so we will print those off in the spring we will make those available for students and have those forms in our office for them. And so they can come by and pick those up and we'll have an interview process where those people that send those scholarships out will choose those recipients for that. And so I think that that is kind of the gist of our scholarships. And so I think we can move on to Lee. Okay, thank you, Courtney. We'll You're move welcome. on to our next slide with Miss Lee Keller with information about financial aid. Hi there. Um, so everybody wants to know how on earth am I going to pay for college for my student? And so we're going to talk about the two big ones that we have just for in-state and then federal aid. Um, the first thing students will need to do is they need to think about filling out that FAFSA. And what FAFSA means is the free application for federal student aid. There's a couple of websites out there floating around that are not the real website. And so sometimes kids will make the mistake of applying and then they get to the end and it wants to charge them for it. And so that is a no, no. Um, this is a free application. And so if it charges you, you're probably on the wrong page. So I went ahead and attached a link there, um, studentaid.gov. And um, this is just basically to determine it's an application. So the government decides how much families can afford to pay for college. And so EFC, which is expected family contribution. And so the government, you know, sometimes kids don't think that's, it's not really a fair um, equation sometimes. There's like, oh my gosh, they think my family can pay all that for college. Um, sometimes it says zero. Sometimes it says just a strange number. And um, it goes basically on the formula of how many kids are in college, uh, what the income is for the custodial parent, and uh, kind of spits out, this is how much money your family can afford to pay. And so from that, the government gets information on if you're eligible for a Pell Grant, P-E-L-L, -L, not Pell, like I'm Pell, but um, Pell Grant. And so that is basically the federal aid that comes into play for students. Um, and a lot of times colleges will say you're Pell eligible. And so this is what they're referring to. They're referring back to this application because if you're Pell eligible, it opens up sometimes some other need-based scholarships that are from the state, need-based scholarships from that college. Uh, the application used to open way back in January 1st, uh, and now a few years ago they decided they probably needed to open it on October the 1st, and so it is open. We've had some kids try to access that, um, so if you want to go ahead and start working on that without our assistance, which I'm going to talk to you about the dates we're going to help, um, make sure you're applying for the 2022-23 school year because it's still right there right now for this school year, but they're not going to college. They're not eligible for aid until they graduate from high school. So they have to graduate and they graduate in 2022. Uh, the first step in the financial aid process create, is creating an FSA ID. And so we will do that with our students next week. We're gonna have some financial aid people here during second block with seniors. Ms. Wallace mentioned that this year we had the great opportunity that all of our seniors are assigned to us as counselors during second block. If their teacher goes to their PLC meeting, then those seniors come to us. And so we're working on some big important stuff like financial aid. Financial aid is super important to those parents. They want to know how on earth are we gonna pay for college? Is there any help out there? And so we're starting that process um, with the ladies and gentlemen from UACCB. We'll be on campus during second block next week. And that is October the 18th through the 21st. We will also have them here during parent-teacher conferences on October, 3rd, October 21st in the evening there. So they'll be on hand to help parents with that FAFSA if they want help with that. It does populate information directly from the IRS website. So it's a lot easier. It used to just be a paper form, uh, but now it's all online. So it's a little bit, e little bit more user-friendly, as user-friendly as the government can be. The next one is, that was federal aid, this is state aid. And so we've been doing this actually with seniors in second block this week. It is a super easy application. It's the Arkansas Universal application. Um, 
seniors are a funny group of people and that they do not want to do anything if it does not affect them. And so literally the scholarship has kind of something for everyone in it. And so it has something for our kids who have that four point and that 32, the governor's distinguished application. It has something for students who have that 19 and qualify the, for the Arkansas Academic Challenge. And then it has stuff for the kids in there who are maybe planning on doing welding, maybe an RN, the Arkansas Futures Grant. And so when they can apply for that, they apply and it also opened October the 1st. They apply for all three programs and it basically spits out like this is what you're eligible for. They put in their ACT score or their SAT score and it says, congratulations, you're eligible for this. Um, if they're going to try to get that governor's scholars, um, time is of the essence and that that application actually closes on February the 1st. So it opened October 1st. They have plenty of time to get that in there and get that done. And then June 1st for the other. So if they're waiting to get that 19 on the ACT, they can do that. You know, they can take the December ACT or they can take the Accuplacer and they can still get that score um, all the way through probably the April ACT for the Arkansas Academic Challenge. And our last slide is basically a pamphlet that the ADHD, the Arkansas Department of Higher Ed sends out to us called How to Pay for College, which is super important for parents. I know I have an 11 year old and it's super important for me. I'm thinking about seven years from now, how am I gonna pay for college? Um, and so if you click on that, uh, we do get these pamphlets, but we found that students generally do not read them. So this is an electronic copy if you want to click on it and it will lead you through the process and like how we're going to do that. Talks about the FAFSA, talks about the universal application and just some other sources of funding that are available to students living in Arkansas. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for this awesome information. I know that our parents and students are going to find this so helpful. So this concludes our Pioneer Parent Academy session uh, called a college planning 101. And if you would like to request more information from the ladies you heard from today, you'll see their emails posted here on the last slide. We also have a link to a college planning 101 request more information form. And if you'd like to fill that out, um, we will reach out to you as soon as we get that notification. Uh, thank you so much for joining our session and stay tuned for more information.